So, as a hobby machinist, I find myself many times uh, needing to either tap or thread internal or external threads. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, you're trying to use your thread pitch uh, gauges to figure out thread pitches. Well, there's some imperial threads that are so close to metric threads that I've actually had a hard time sometimes figuring out what the pitch was. What Was it metric? Was it imperial? Not 100% sure. So I've been meaning to buy these uh, thread pitch gauges. Uh, I guess that's what you call these thread checkers, uh, thread gauges, whatever you call them. Uh, I finally broke down, bought this set. This has got both imperial and metric. It was the bigger of the two sets. There's a couple different varieties of this that you can get. Uh, one of them goes up to like 10 millimeter and I don't know, 7 sixteenths or half inch or something like that. And then you got this set that goes all the way up to, uh, uh, what is it, M16. Here's an M14, M12, another M12 at a different thread pitch. And then it goes all the way up to, I think, 3 quarter by 16, 5 eighths by 18, 9 sixteenths, 18, half inch by 20, half inch 13. Anyway, I ordered these and then I got them and I thought, okay, well that's going to really be handy, except for the fact that uh, if I plan on keeping them on this cable and, you know, you need one down here kind of toward the center, that's going to be a pain dragging these off each and every time. Now, they probably intend for you to keep them on this, but, you know, you, you want to be able to, you know, be able to quickly thread this into a, a part or thread it onto a part. You're not always going to have a bolt out that you can just thread into this or a nut that you can thread onto this. Sometimes you've got it chucked up in the lathe um, or even in the mill. So, you know, I want to take these off this cable, and originally I thought I'd just throw them in a box. Then I thought to myself, self, that's going to be a pain digging through these each and every time, trying to figure out which one of these sizes you need. So, I ended up firing up Fusion 360, and I made a little index holder for these. Now, this is just 3D printed. Uh, I'm going to make the file available for free. It's going to be on Thingiverse. You'll find it down in the bottom of the description uh, here. And you can download this file. And I'll also put the link to the exact set of these that I have. But any of these should work because obviously uh, thread sizes are all the same worldwide. Meaning, if you have a M12 by 1.5 millimeter you know, thread gauge here, it's going to be exactly like this one here as far as the size. So these holes are specifically uh, sized to each and every one of these different uh, thread checkers. Uh, they're just a few thousands over so they're not a tight fit. I was going to actually have these threaded to where they'd screw in and I thought man that'd be a pain to have to sit there and unscrew them uh, in and out each and every time so I realized that just dropping them down in there was definitely going to be a lot handier situation now uh, the one thing you don't want to do if you take a look at mine right here there's a seam I think you might be able to see it right there well I ended up running out of filament uh, before it completely finished so I ended up having to print just the top I don't know probably three sixteenths uh, of what was left up top here and then gluing it on so make sure you got plenty of filament when you're printing yours anyway oh one other thing so I did have a little extra room right here so I figured uh, I looked up some common drill bits that you may need to be able to tap certain uh, you know certain thread pitches so I just put five different common I think what are they uh, number 21, number 3, number 7, 5 sixteenths, and 23 sixty-fourths. So, and they are a little oversized, so if you are a metric uh, type of guy, you can actually drop metric drill bits down in there. Of course, these sizes are, are embossed in this particular 
uh, 3D print, so you're not going to be able to get rid of that. But let's take these off. I'm curious to see how they fit. Um, I did try to make these a few thousands. I think about 10 to 15 thousandths oversized so that these will drop in and out, uh, you know, pretty easy. So, let's see, what end did I start here? I started with the metric, so there's that one. Let's just, we'll, t we'll take all these off real quick. Well, we'll take a handful off at a time. I don't want to, I don't want these little balls going everywhere. And these are laser etched. Now, I do realize that the uh, the sizing here is going to be covered up by some of these so I did the best I could to uh, try to get them sized to where you know they would be in between the uh, the gauges here but they're obviously not all gonna gonna be able to be visible at certain angles these little balls are really getting to be a pain. Okay, so what size do we have here? M10 1.5. M10 1.0. Means that one should be that one. This is M8. Okay, let's move that a little closer. And what do we got here? M7 by 1. M6 by 1. And these, like I was saying earlier, is some extra room to uh, drop in some commonly sized drill bits. Which one is this one here? Is that one? Yeah. Oh, before I put these others in. I even uh, took the liberty 5.8 inches from center to center and you know I realized this is a 3d printed part so I made extra material you know to hang this up like on the side of a toolbox or a wall or something uh, I put these little screw notches these keyholes in them with quite a bit of meat so that you know these will drop in you will literally literally have to have close to what 200 thousandths worth of stick out I did that intentionally uh, to make this beefier and when I 3d printed mine I put support blockers right here in Cura so all this right here is solid it doesn't have any infill the rest of it is infilled but uh, the areas where the screws go I, I went ahead and did solid just to so it wouldn't be any weaker than it needed to be And like I say, this is going to be, you know, available for free. So if you want some kind of organization, whether you set this in your toolbox or uh, hang it up or whatever, however you want to do it. obviously keeping these on this cable to me isn't even a isn't even an option I'd rather have these thrown in a box loose than having these on this cable Anyway, if you need a uh, organizer for these thread checkers or thread gauges, 
then uh, feel free to download this and print it out. One other thing, guys, is I've tended to uh, start printing with PLA Plus. I've had better luck with the Plus version of PLA. It uh, seems to be a little bit stronger. It does print at a little bit higher temperature. Uh, but they always come out good. They always come out strong. Uh, so I'll put a link to this particular filament also, which is a PLA Plus, and I just use an Ender 3 3D printer. It's literally like a $250 3D printer, and man, I've been using that for two or three years, and it is it has been rock solid. I've been really happy with that uh, Creality Ender 3. They've even got better ones now, the Ender 3 Pro or Plus or something. They, they've upgraded them to where it's even a nicer printer now. Uh, but anyway, I'll put a link to everything, the, the thread gauges, the filament, uh, and everything that I use to make this part. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to throw that in there. That if you haven't used the PLA Plus, I highly recommend switching to PLA Plus anytime you can. Alright, you guys take care. We'll see you.